Assalamu alaikum. Well, today is our first lecture of class metric. The day is Tuesday, the date is 1st of December, and our topic is matrices, chapter number 7. So, before moving to any other point, we first have to understand what actually is matrices and why do we use it. So, matrices. Uh, it is usually and generally used to represent data or more specifically it is used to represent equations okay so first we will understand that how to represent a matrix okay so for the sake of your understanding I am writing one example here 3 8 0 1 9 6 okay so we represent a matrix with a square bracket and in form of rows and columns what are rows? I am writing it here, something written horizontally or is raw and something written vertically is a column. Okay, so here I have wrote an example of a matrix using rows and column. Okay, so this is row number 1, this is row number 2. This is column number 1, this is column number 2, and this is column number 3. Okay, now we will discuss about the order of matrix. Order of a matrix. Okay, it's very important thing to understand a matrix that uh, we we should know what is the order of a matrix if we write a matrix somewhere we must should know what is the order of a matrix so again I'm writing an example here 2 3 8 9 minus 1 and 0 or you may consider any other matrix so here what is the order of a matrix we simply write it as rows by column it simply means that you have to figure out how many number of rows are used here and how many number of columns are used here. So here in this case, in this specific example, I have used 3 rows, 1, 2 and 3. So rows are 3 and I have used 2 columns here, column number 1 and column number 2. So there are 2 columns here, okay. So the order of this matrix 2, 3, 8, 9, 1, 0 minus 1 0 the order of this matrix is 3 by 2 this is the order of a matrix okay I'm recalling it again uh, I have choose the first topic the first topic is representation of matrices here for the sake of your understanding I have considered uh, just one matrix 3 8 0 1 9 6 there are two rows and three columns what are rows something written horizontally is called a row something written vertically is called a column okay then I have moved to another, another topic that is order of a matrix. What is order of a matrix? It's simply rows by column. Okay, so you simply have to figure out how many number of rows are used here and how many number of columns are used here. So in this specific example, the number of columns are two. Okay, and the number of rows are three. Okay, keep in keep in mind that rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. And we first have to write rows. Okay, so everyone, uh, according to this, this, this lecture, you may solve part number 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. So, let's start here. In okay, so according to this lecture, by following this lecture, you may solve part number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 from question number 1. Okay, so you have to do it by yourself by using this lecture. Okay, now after understanding order of matrices, we are now moving to another topic that is location of elements in a matrix. Okay, so for the sake of your understanding, I am writing yet another example here. A, B, C, and G. Okay, so first of all, you have to figure out the number of rows and number of columns. Okay, so I am writing it here first column and this is second column now here horizontal rows first row and here there is second row okay so this is first column this is second column and this is first row and this is second row so in order to find the location of element 
what you have what you simply have to do that you have to figure out what column is there and what row is there okay so it is associated with the first row so we will write one here and it is associated with the first column so we will write another one here similarly now what about b b is associated with first row so we will write one here and b is associated with second column so we will write two here now if you come to C, C is associated with second row, so we will write first two here, and it is associated with the first column, so we will write one here. And the last one D, D is associated with second row, so we will write two here, and it is associated with second column as well, so we will write two here. So this is how we locate elements in a matrix. Okay, after understanding location of uh, elements in a matrix now we are moving to another topic the topic number four here is types of matrices okay so we are moving to type number one the very first type of matrices is rectangular matrix okay so i'm writing one example here two three one. Okay, so that is rectangular matrix. Why is it called rectangular matrix? Now I'm, I'm going to define it. So if a matrix is uh, termed uh, as a rectangular matrix, then it must satisfy this condition that rows, number of rows, are not equal to number of column. If you have a matrix, and you figure out this number of rows are not equal to number of column then we may term it as a rectangular matrix okay so here in this case there are three columns one two and three and here is just one row okay so number of columns are not equal to number of rows so it is said to be a rectangular matrix now let's move to step number two step number two is the square matrix So I'm writing one example for a square matrix. Okay. Here in this case, in a square matrix, the condition is number of rows must should be equal to number of columns. Okay. So here in this case, uh, you may see it that here are two vertical columns and two horizontal rows as well. So here in this case number of rows are equal to number of columns. This is why it is called square matrix. Okay. So now let's move to type number 3. Now we have column matrix. Okay, so the condition for column matrix is that number of columns must should be equal to 1. So I am writing a matrix that contains a single column that is okay. So that is a column matrix here. Why? Because it simply contains one column at all. So it doesn't matter how many number of rows are there. Uh, Till it contains only one column, it will be termed as a column matrix. So the example number four is rectangular matrix. Okay. So the topic number four is raw matrix. The condition for raw matrix is number of rows should be equal to one. Okay. As we have done previously, uh, the raw matrix is same to that of the column matrix. The only difference is that here number of columns are 1 and here number of rows are 1. Okay, So I am writing example for raw matrix that is 2, 3, 4. So it may be seen clearly that here in this case, in this matrix, we simply have just one row. It doesn't matter how many number of columns are there. Are there until you have just one row, you may term it as a row matrix. Okay. So now we are moving to step number five. Number five is diagonal matrix. Okay. So 
So the condition for a diagonal matrix is that the diagonal, one diagonal should be equal to zero. Okay, this one diagonal must should be equal to zero. Until one diagonal is equal to zero, it doesn't matter what numbers, what elements are written in other places. Until one diagonal is zero, you may refer it to as diagonal matrix. Okay. So let's move to tab number five. Sorry, six. Now we next. Okay. Now the condition for a scalar matrix it is similar to that of the diagonal matrix. The only difference is that the diagonal elements should be same. If you have zeros in one diagonal and same elements in other diagonal, then you may refer to it as the scalar matrix. Okay, the only difference is that here in diagonal matrix, the one diagonal must should be equal to zero. It doesn't matter what elements are there on the other places. Now, but in scalar matrix, the one diagonal should be equal to zero, and the elements of the other diagonal must should be equal. Okay, so tag number seven. Okay. The condition for null matrix is that when all elements of a matrix are zero, then you may refer it to as a null matrix. Okay. When all elements of a matrix are zero, you may refer it to as null matrix. Now let's move to tab number eight. Unit matrix. And it is also the last step. So unit matrix. The condition for unit matrix is that okay. the unit matrix. The condition for unit matrix is that that uh, you have one in the leading diagonal. Okay. So the first diagonal, this diagonal is called the leading diagonal. Okay. So uh, you may also refer it to as the scalar matrix. Uh, why? Because it has uh, zero in the first diagonal and the same element in the other diagonal. But there is one exception: the, uh, the other diagonal, the leading diagonal, which has the same number of elements, which has the same element, that must should be equal to one. If it is equal to one, then we may refer it to as unit matrix. Okay? So I'm repeating it again. The only difference between scalar matrix and unit matrix is that uh, you must. Hey, you must should have one here. If there is one, it may refer to as unit matrix. If there is, if there are some other numbers, for example, three three or five five or six six, it may refer it to as a scalar matrix. Or and if we, we do, and if we have different numbers here, like three four and minus five two, it will be referred to as diagonal matrix. Okay. So that's all. That's all for today. Okay. So according to this lecture, by using, by following this lecture, you may now attempt all the parts of these two questions. Okay. So we attempt the whole exercise 7.1 just by following this lecture. Okay. For example, uh, here from uh, looking at, at the category number one, and if you look at the question number one, here they ask about the order of a matrix. You know it well now. They ask about uh, the representation of a matrix. They ask about the type of a matrix. They ask about the location of a matrix. Now, till now, you know it very well, so you may solve it. So, so you may solve the whole 7.1 by yourself. Okay? That's all for today. Thank you, Lapis.